Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a pretty interesting and somewhat unusual exoplanet known as Coconuts 2b. That's right, it's called Coconuts. But the name itself has nothing to do with the shape or the composition of the planet. It is nevertheless a very interesting exoplanet that was recently directly imaged by the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below. So let's talk a little bit more about why this planet is so exciting and also find out why this planet is so unusual and what exactly we might learn about it in some of the future studies. Now, first of all, when it comes to discovering various exoplanets, today it's very difficult to find something that would surprise scientists. Thousands upon thousands of various exoplanets have already been discovered and some of them are indeed quite unusual. However, finding an exoplanet about which it's kind of worth talking about is a little bit more rare now than it was a few years ago. The vast majority of all of the planets out there have actually been discovered by looking at the shadows of those planets passing in front of the parent star. This is what's known as the transit method. And because of this, the vast majority of the planets found so far are more or less kind of similar to one another. They're usually relatively close to the parent star. They also generally have a relatively short year. They usually go around the star in just a few weeks, maybe a few months, but almost never more than a few years. And all of this is, of course, because of the way that we look for these planets. We have to look at a certain region for a long enough time to be able to detect them and to be able to confirm them afterwards. And so any extreme planets really, really far away or planets that might be orbiting in a way where they can't actually pass in front of the star are generally not visible using these methods. And because of this, there are several other methods, successful methods that could be used to find exoplanets. The other very successful method is this right here, the radial velocity or the wobbling method. This is when the planet is really massive and it causes the star itself to sort of move back and forth as it travels across the galaxy. But this of course requires a very massive planet. And so all of the planets discovered using this method are normally more or less quite extreme in terms of mass, but also usually are really close to the star itself. In order for them to pull at the star and to make the star wobble this way, they do have to be relatively close to the star itself. Some other successful methods sometimes employ the technique known as the gravitational lensing, but this here relies on a pure luck. The star and the planets have to pass in front of a distant object in order for this to be visible. And because of this, this usually only happens once per million years for a single planetary object. And there are actually a few more methods that we're not going to be mentioning today because I've talked about them in some of the previous videos, but we'll talk more about a lot of these in some of the future videos as well. But there's one method in detecting exoplanets that is actually kind of exciting. This is of course the so-called direct imaging method. This is when you literally get to see the planet itself. It's not showing us the shadow, it's not a gravitational lensing effect, it's the actual planet itself. Now normally for direct imaging methods, the scientists somehow have to get rid of the light from the star itself. And this way you can usually distinguish a tiny object really close to the star assuming that the object is bright enough or assuming that it emits enough some sort of a light, for example, infrared light. But a lot of other scientists have been trying to perfect this method or to try to use it in different ways as well. About a year ago, back in 2020, the researchers from University of Hawaii published this paper right here, where they created a new method known as the Cool Companions on Ultra-Wide Orbits, the method they refer to as coconuts. I guess because it's Hawaii and because it's easy to remember it. And back then they discovered their first object using this technique. The planet they refer to as Coconuts 1b. And just as the name Coconut suggests, this object has to be on a very wide orbit away from the parent star. With the planet being relatively cool in terms of temperature, or at least being some sort of a substellar object, such as for example a brown dwarf. But the main difficulty here was basically trying to figure out if these objects are connected to one another, or if they're just separate objects moving across the night skies. And so by using a thorough analysis of their motion, they were able to see that these are co-moving objects, they're moving in the same direction. Thus implying that they were connected to one another and were gravitationally connected to one another, thus forming some sort of a star system. But now, just over a year later, they discovered the second object using this very interesting survey, with this one also being the closest planet we've ever imaged directly. The planet you see right there, known as Coconuts 2b. Now, as you can see, it's a very, very dim object. It's also almost impossible to detect using almost any telescope. You actually need a very specific infrared observations in order to be able to even see this. 
And so how exactly were they able to see this object? Well, first of all, this is a gas giant, very likely about six to maybe seven masses of Jupiter. But unlike our Jupiter, it's also relatively young. It's maybe anywhere from 150 to maximum 800 million years old. Because of this, it still has a lot of different isotopes on the inside that are heating up the planet quite a lot. Our Jupiter was very similar to this as well a long time ago. And because of all of this heat coming from the inside, it's maintaining the temperature of this planet at something like 160 degrees Celsius or about 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Or as the scientists themselves mention, it's basically similar to the temperature when you're baking something in your oven. And because of this, it produces quite a lot of infrared light that's visible from relatively far distances, assuming that you have an infrared telescope to see it. And so to work all of this out, the scientists essentially combined the databases from various surveys that looked at the universe in different light spectra and have collected terabytes and terabytes of data already. So for example, they used the Gaia telescope's observations of the motion of stars and then combined them with the observations from the White Field Infrared Survey Explorer, also known as the WISE spacecraft, that was able to create an entire night skies by using its infrared observations and the data from all of these observations are still even used today. And so by combining these various surveys and various observations, they were able to confirm that these two objects are first of all in the same star system, but more importantly that the coconut 2b is an actual planetary object that seems to emit a lot of infrared light visible from 35 light years away from us. And because of this, this makes this the closest directly observed planet ever which is already a pretty exciting discovery because it means that scientists will now focus on this planet to try to identify and study its atmospheric composition. But this system is exciting for a lot of other reasons as well. So first of all, although it might not look like they're far from one another, the distance between these two objects is quite dramatic. This is believed to be the second farthest planetary object to its parent star. Coconuts 2b is about one-tenth of a light year away from the star around 6,400 astronomical units. And that's nearly 1,200 or 1,300 times farther away than Jupiter is from the Sun. Which of course means that from that distance, the star itself probably looks like a tiny, tiny red dot. Here's the artistic representation of what all of this might look like. Moreover, because of the distances, a single year on this planet is about 1.1 million years on planet Earth. And so naturally, it's sort of unknown right now how such a planet could form, and more importantly, how it could actually stay in the orbit for so long without being captured by something else. Or maybe it is a captured object, and if so, where did it come from? At the moment, there are no actual answers to any of this. At the same time, this is also the second coolest exoplanet discovered so far in terms of temperatures, and in case you were wondering, the record holder is still this sub-brown dwarf you see on the picture, this is still the coldest planet we've discovered. It's colder because it's much older and also because it's orbiting a white dwarf. It's also the second farthest object from its parent star because this object right here still holds the record. It's still slightly farther away from the parent star than the planet coconut 2b. But unlike other exoplanets, because we can actually directly see this one and also study its light by looking at it without using any other techniques, it really represents a perfect opportunity for the scientists to try to figure out, first of all, how various gas giants form, while also trying to figure out how exactly such distant planets form in various star systems as well. Of all different gas giants out there, this one is definitely one of the more extreme examples and definitely requires a very interesting explanation, something that currently does not exist. And at the same time, another interesting question here would be the moons. This object very likely has a lot of moons, and also because it's warmer, some of these moons, if they're close enough, might have very interesting conditions on the surface. They're not going to be habitable, but they're still going to be much warmer, or at least somewhat warmer, than the moons around Jupiter. And so definitely a lot of intriguing investigations and potential future studies for this unusual object known as Coconuts 2. But I'm also looking forward to discovering what Coconuts 3 is going to be. Now, it's important to understand that these are not new discoveries. This planet was already found back in 2011, by that wise survey I mentioned previously, but it's only now that the scientists realize that these two objects are actually in the same star system. And so there are probably a lot more of these objects already discovered by previous surveys that we're going to be learning about in some of the future videos. 
Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.